Welcome back. We have been talking about what happens when we are becoming old, why aging happens. And then we talked about that our this ability to survive homeodynamic space becomes smaller and smaller and we become more prone to problems, diseases. Some of us will be very lucky who will not totally collapse. Yeah? They can be very healthy for long life. But most of us will have one or more problems coming. So, of course, there is nothing much to look forward to in becoming old if we are not healthy. So there are biological reasons why we want to do something about aging, why we are afraid of aging, why we don't want to be told that you are old person. We all want to behave like young. But that's a biological reality. Of course, scientists are working hard on finding various approaches to help us how to enjoy our old age with minimum problems. Some of us will be very lucky. There are people over the age of 100, 105 who can run marathons, who can run sprints. But what you see is, they are, even if they are absolutely healthy, they are still slow. They are aged. They are old. There is no such old person who can compete with a very young person. They compete within themselves. So biologically, we need to do a lot of things to maintain health. And in several of our forthcoming uh, little lectures, we will talk about that. What about socially? Yeah. Earlier we talked about that we become, uh, we have experience, we become wiser, we have more empathy, uh, we maybe even feel the sense of freedom. These are the social characteristics. But we are still afraid. These are social characteristics only if society accepts it. I can feel I'm a great wise man, but you have to give me the feedback that yes, I am. I have experience, but if you don't want to use it, what fun is that experience? So all these characteristics, empathy, experience, wisdom, freedom, they depend upon each other. If we recognize in each other who has experience, who has wisdom, and if we say old age gives us that, do we use that? No the way the societies are at the moment. Socially, it is even more frightening situation. What comes to mind from the word old age in social terms? Burden, hmm? elder burden, aging burden, dispensable that these can be removed. If you have to fire some people in, some, in these modern times, who is the first one to get firing? As a result, you start feeling invisible. Yeah, you are not, your identity is lost. You become eventually lonely in some head. So this aging burden, aging dispensability, loneliness and invisibility, these are very, very frightening consequences of living long and becoming old. And why do we have these consequences? We think that in old times or in some other societies even now perhaps, Old people have great respect. People look forward to them. Well, the, of course, this is changing in a big way everywhere. One reason in old times was there were not many old people. You know, there were very few people who will live to such long ages. So, and they had a lot of information, knowledge in their hand, also the, uh, the power decision making. But now most of us are going to become old. And that's again a game of number. And at the same time, societies have given somehow so much power to the gods of money. Everything is measured by money. Somehow these people who are running our universities, our societies, they are measuring everything based on what is the last line there, what is the money. I don't know when it happened that these business management people and lawyers and all these speculators, they got all the power. So the value of life in terms of experience, in terms of wisdom, in terms of anything else, empathy, the nice, niceness of all have just gone in the background. I am terrified if I become invisible or when I will become invisible, when I will be dispensable, when I will be lonely. And this is the consequence. You cannot avoid it if we keep on worshipping gods of money. Some countries have national happiness measurement levels. I think Bhutan has that. But 
Otherwise, we are talking about gross national product, growth in terms of continuous growth. It should be always growth. No, continuous growth is a sign of cancer. Cancer is the one which grows continuously. Not only at biology level, sociological level also, continuous growth is not actually a healthy sign. But somehow, we have all agreed to that kind of uh, system. So for continuous growth, you have to control the money. Some people have to be given too much money and they run away. Why should we consider old people as burden? Because they cost so much medicine price. Because we want to buy some aeroplanes to bomb some other countries. Old people are the burden. Why are they burden? Why the medicines are so expensive? Because somebody is making thousand, ten thousand fold profit out of that. Production of medicines is not really that expensive. We have created the system where everything is measured by money. We choose those kind of rulers who follow those policies. So first of all, as a scientist, as a biologist, I am doing my best to make biological interventions. As a biologist, I cannot do much on sociology. We all have to do something about it. We have to question this whole approach that why aging is a burden. Can we talk about aging as a burden without using the gods of money in that? Take away the power back into your own hands. Let's start changing our own value system. Do I want to accept my age 62 or do I want to pretend no, I am 26? If I am in that denial, it is going to be terrible because you are not able to stop the process. You are going to become old. I am going to become old. Whatever I have the hatred against old age, anti-aging, anti-aging, I will still not be able. So why not to prepare myself to go ahead, use the technology, use the medicines, which we will talk in later lectures. But please, if we can do something to give value to age, the various stages of life, to value to old age, not value in terms of who is making how much money. Yes, money is needed, profits are needed, but how much? Thousandfold, hundredfold, tenfold? Who determines how costly the medicine is? Who determines whether I am useful for my society, for my university? If somebody is measuring how much money I bring for some lawyers, some businessmen, this is the consequence. I know this is very depressing, but this is one very crucial part for healthy aging. We will talk scientific parts again, but I want to bring this to your attention here. Gods of money are making old age a very frightening situation. See you next time.